Here we see a singular white cube. Potentially the last of its kind. That is until I increase this number, that's uh, grid size, until uh, let's say 16. And bam, we've got like 128 cubes now. It's as easy as that. This is what we're going to be making today. So let's get into it. Obviously, first thing we do is make a new actor, give it a good name. Something like uh, Grid Generator. And once you've made that, we're going to uh, take a quick look at the system as I have it right now. This is how large the system is. As you can see, it's not that big at all. But the most important part of this entire page is over on the left hand side here. All of these variables. These are the variables you're going to need. So you might as well start making them now so you don't get confused and caught up trying to make these variables as we go along. Uh, you want the grid mesh to be public, the grid size to be public, the distance x to be public, and the distance y to be public. x chord and y chord do not need to be public at all. Once you've made those variables, you want to go into your construction script for your actor. You could do this at event begin play. Uh, the downside would be that you don't see it show up in a level editor like this. So unless you have something that needs to dynamically change during gameplay, you just put it in the construction script. If you want to have things that more dynamically change during gameplay time, that is entirely possible, of course. Uh, but that's a little beyond the scope of this video. So let's get into it. First thing you do is you're going to grab your grid size, uh, holding control down to get a reference to it, and you're going to multiply that by itself. So right now we have an output for the grid size cubed. We're going to put that into a for loop, and we're going to put the first index of the for loop on number one. That is because if we set a grid size of, for instance, eight, we're going to get a last index here, because that's what we're going to plug it into, of 64. But if we start the for loop at zero, that actually gives us 65 indexes. And that's not what we want, because we want exactly 64 blocks. So starting at first index one will really help you a lot with that. Then we need to check the coordinates. We're going to go x coordinates, one through, for instance, eight or 16 or whatever you put into the grid size. And then once you've made it past that, we need to reset the x chord back to zero and increase the y chord. So that's actually not overly complicated. We're just going to do that real quick. So we pull in the x chord, we pull in the grid size, and we just check. Is the x chord greater than the grid size? Minus one. Uh, the minus one has a similar function to why we just put the index on one, is because otherwise it's going to compare numbers that don't really compare too well you don't need to worry about it just like put minus one and you'll be fine holding down b while you click into your event graph you can put a branch into that and we have our start of our system so right now if we have a x coordinate that is bigger than grid size minus one we will get the true output here otherwise we'll get the false we'll start by doing what we need to do with true so We've gone over the limit of how many blocks we want in a single row. So now we want to reset the X chord, dragging it, holding Alt to get a set node for that variable. We want to set it back to zero. Then we get the Y coordinate, and we drag off that and type plus plus. That gets our increment integer. So that will take whatever this value is at the moment, and it will add one to it. Uh, and then we also want to set that to maintain its value. After we've done that, we're going to loop this back around to the beginning of the branch. So what happens now is if we see the X chord is too big, we set it back to zero and we bump the Y chord up by one. Then we set it back to the beginning of the branch because if this answer is false, we're actually going to add our mesh. So we do add static mesh component. And from there, we pull out of this blue pin on the right hand side, and we set static mesh. That static mesh is going to be the variable we made before. So we pull that into here, and we plug it into there. Pulling another one out of these pins here from the static mesh component, we uh, will get the bounds, the local bounds is what we'll get. This node will get you a vector coordinate for the top leftmost corner, 
of your mesh and the right bottom most corner of your mesh. So if we subtract those from each other, we will get the exact dimensions of our mesh's bounding box, which is going to be very important because obviously you want to have things scale to whatever mesh you put into it. And how do we do that, you might ask? Well, let's start by uh, adding a set relative location node. And by hovering over this pin, right-clicking, we can split the structure pin. That will give us individual control over the X, Y, and Z location. We'll do the same here with the output of our subtraction. These three pins are the exact X dimensions, Y dimensions, and Z dimensions of our mesh. So if we just multiply that simply by the corresponding coordinates, so we get an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, if you wanted to make this more complicated, you could add a Z layer to this entire system as well. We're not going to do that today. Uh, but do let me know if you want me to make a follow-up video uh, including that as well. Anyway, so we're going to multiply uh, this X output by our X coordinate and the Y output by our Y coordinate. And then the result of that is going to go into the new location pins of our set relative location. And then once the location has been set, we uh, get another reference to our X coordinate and we increment that by typing plus plus, and then we set it to a new value. And this is really basically all there is to it. That being said, you uh, maybe need to remind yourself to actually hook up the uh, relative location node to the add static mesh component node. That is something I forgot, freaking sue me. So if we now add this grid generator into the world, you'll at first see nothing and maybe panic a little bit, but that is because we haven't added a grid mesh yet. So let's just take the first mesh we see here, that's fun, uh, the, the sphere, that will work. And you will probably panic even more because right now we have a mesh set and still nothing is showing up. That is because the grid size is set to zero. So if we set that to four, you will see we have a four by four grid of spheres but there's no room in between them and as you can see uh, my other system does have that and uh, this this could be fine if you're just trying to make like a, a certain type of floor or something but you really want to have the flexibility of, of setting that distance so let's go back into our grid generator because it's really easy to add that because all we need to do is a addition here so add a adding node behind both of your location coordinates and then drag in your x distance and your y distance and maybe make a little bit more room to do this math and from there you literally uh, just multiply the x dimension of your mesh by the x distance which again this is very messy i'm very sorry about that and you add that to the coordinates that you already had and you replace this pin you do the same thing with the y distance again you multiply that by the y value that you get out of subtracting your local bound from each other you add that to the coordinates you already had you put that into the y location and then the last thing to do is to add another pin to both of these multiplications you can do that by just pressing the add pin button pretty obvious and dragging in the x coordinate and the y coordinate respectively and once you've done that and you've compiled the entire thing you will see that in fact there is now distance in between them. And that is actually proportional to the size of the mesh as well. So if you add in a bigger mesh, I don't know if we have a bigger mesh, uh, we have a smaller mesh, you will see that it's actually fully proportional. So uh, this is how you make a grid. Again, you can make a system wherein you also have a, um, a grid that goes into like the Z direction, so more of a cube uh, with this exact same system that complicates things a little bit but it's the same basic principles but instead of just checking x and y coords after this you would also check for a z coordinate and do the same math here but for the z location as well that's been it for today i hope uh, i made some level of sense for you today if not do feel free to check out the comment section because i'll be answering any questions you have and if that doesn't help uh, there's always my discord in which i am always happy to help anybody uh, as long as i can until the next time, I'll see you then. I'm going to get back to actually programming my own game though.